Hey gang, today prompted from a question in a live stream, we are going to cover sixth. Now sixth, I think are probably the sweetest sounding of all the intervals and they're used all throughout pop, rock, R&B, you name it, country, obviously. So they're used in a lot of different places. So it's actually a good thing to know. Uh, but they are a little bit tricky. So what I want to do is I want to cover sort of how to play them in the most common settings and what are some of the, at least for two string sets, um, what are the most common uh, places where you're going to do them and what are the most common fingerings and just cover just a tiny amount of the theory and where they can be used. So, you know, I just played uh, where you can use it in country, you know, the... You know, you can use it in country all over the place. Um, how about this one? So you can use it in rock, right? Um, and then uh, in R&B, you probably will recognize this. Right? Right, Soul Man, Steve Cropper used six all the time, um, and you know even in places in the blues, right? So um, used all the time in the blues, like Stormy Monday uses some sixths to play. So they're really useful. All right, so I think what I, what I want to show you is that sixths come from, to, to know what a sixth is, and we'll just do this very briefly, you have to know that a sixth comes from a scale. It's an interval from a scale. It's two notes being played at once. Um, and they're separated by six notes in that scale. So one of the common six to play is out of a major scale. So let's do that for G. So I'm just gonna play a G chord. And so if G is our one, and we'll just kind of count this out Nashville numbers style, right? So if G is our one, we've got a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, a whole step, and a half step. All right, so it's... And you'll recognize that sound. And let me just play it, just because this can be more useful on the guitar, let's play it in a compact form, more sort of vertically rather than horizontally. So... Right? So... And that should sound the same. Likewise, if I play it up here, it would be. Now that's just a major scale. There's lots of other scales. There's lots of places where you can play these intervals, but that's the most common one. There's one other common one, and we'll cover that at the end, and that's for the, the dominant seventh chord, and that will be the mixolydian. But let's cross that bridge when we come to it, okay? It, it, sixth work the same way for that. Okay, so let's take that and let's figure out a sixth and what that would look like. So if this is the one, then two, three, four, five, and six. So the two notes would be this one, which is the one, and this, which is the sixth. Now if I wanted to play another sixth over that same chord or in that same key, I would pick the next note up and I would count six forward from that. So kind of toward what we were doing before, we were doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? We could do two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that would be the same as going from one to six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So those are two notes that are separated by six in that scale. 
So now I've got two that I could play. And so forth, okay? So that's all that sixth are. If I pick the next one in the scale, it would be starting from the three note and going to the eight, right? So that would be six. So let me count it out. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it would be this. And this is a bit of a stretch, so we don't usually play this. We usually play that, which is a little bit closer together and easier to finger. All right, so now we'd have, and you see how this is making up its own scale where you're continuing to play this sort of thing. Okay, so that's how they work. That's basically how they work. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you the mechanics of them and then I'll show you, uh, now because I don't usually figure that out all the time. I usually have a couple of patterns that I memorize and I'm used to playing and I get them in my ears. And so then those are gonna be, you're gonna be able to play them over certain particular chords. Um, so let's talk about how to play it. So let's talk about this one right here. We just discovered that this was a sixth over G. Okay, so how do you play that? Well, usually, uh, at least what I do is I pluck, let me just show you, on my right hand, what I do is I pluck on the low string. These are on strings, I should have shown you this, on strings three and on strings one, on string one. And we'll focus on the string set three and one in this uh, particular lesson, but you can do it on any two non-adjacent strings, so two and four, or four and two, five and three, six and four. They work perfectly on all of those. The most common ones are three and one and two and four. Those work uh, really well and are used quite often. Okay, so let's take the uh, this one right here, which is three and one. Okay, so how did I do that? Well, I picked down on the third, or on the lower of the two strings, I pick. And on the, on the upper string, I pop it with my third finger. So this is a hybrid picking technique that I'm using here, okay? I'm just trying to make sure I've got it. Now, you can use your middle finger if, if you like using your middle, middle finger <laughs> uh, on this one, and that'll work just fine. But you want to get it so that I think it, uh, you know, it pops. You can also, if you really don't like that, you can use the pick. Use a downstroke on the lower one and an upstroke on the upper one. All right, and that works too. I don't think it's as clean as that. And if you want to do that sort of country uh, stuff, it uh, it po it helps to pop it a little bit with the uh, pick and fingers. Okay, so that's kind of how to play it. So now we know what a sixth is. We know how to play it. We just have to learn some patterns. And so um, let's learn a couple of different patterns. Uh, probably the most uh, common and useful pattern, and this would be over a major chord, so a straight major, not a seventh chord. We'll learn it for majors and we'll learn it for sevenths. Probably the most common one is over that chord to play this. And you don't have to play that one in the middle. You can probably recognize that, right? So, um, that's all that that is right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to play, there's two different positions. There's the, um, there's the one where the, your lower string is higher up on the fretboard, and the other one is going to be where it lines up. So do you see that? So I'm either going to play this or I'm going to play this. All right, so the pattern that we just played was this. It was the, this one right here, which we'll call the major pattern and this one that we'll call the minor pattern. So here's a major, and here's a minor, here's a mi uh, minor. All right, so. So that's a very common one that people play.
Now let's do the whole thing for a major chord. So we're going to go all the way from G all the way up to the G up here. So. Okay, and here's the pattern. So it's major, minor, major, uh, minor, major, major, minor, minor. It's really diminished, but we're going to say minor and major. Okay, and I've got that written out for you so you can check that out. All right, so it's uh, again, it's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, and major. All right, and that works over any of those happy sounding chords. So if, if you're playing it in a very happy sound, Okay, let's do the other one that I think is really useful, and that is the somewhat bluesy dominant chord, right? So, so the characteristic of a dominant chord is instead of the major seventh, you're using a minor seventh or a flatted seventh. So if we take that same chord in G, what we do, the 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 word the, the note that we're adding there is this F. Now, if you know any theory, you know that when we played that major scale, you, it's, it's not a note that's in the major scale. See this right here? This becomes this. So it becomes slightly bluesy. And that's actually called the Mixolydian scale, but let's not worry about that. That's a G Mixolydian or the same as C major, but let's not worry about that. Let's just think about, I take my sharp F, F sharp, right? Let's play it right here, my F sharp, and I make it a F, a regular F. I minor it, I flat it. So instead of playing this, I play that. And you can hear that's much more bluesy. So anyway, that flatted seventh is a key note in the blues. So how does that affect how this goes? Well, it affects it just a, a little bit. And let me show you. Instead of going major, 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 I'm sorry, major, minor, minor, major, uh, major, minor, 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 we're going to change that a little bit. And we're going to go major, minor, same, minor is the same major and here we're going to play this now you can probably if you know the notes of the guitar you can see that this is an f sharp and this is an f so what we're doing is we're taking this f sharp and we're flattening it and playing f now if you forget and you play this it's not going to be a big deal but that's okay that's going to sound a little bit better then we got another minor now we've got a major and a major. So I've just kind of memorized that pattern. And, um, and I kind of know that that's what it sounds like. And mostly, once you've done it a couple of times, you get it in your ear, and it's going to sound right. Another way of thinking about this is if you have a major chord that you're playing over, you go from this pattern to this pattern when you're going down. That's over this. But when you have a seventh, you keep the same pattern here when you move down two frets. That's just because of that flatted seventh note. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful to you. I think just as a quick recap, you know, sevenths are used, uh, sevenths, sixths are used all over the place, a very key interval, you know. Some of the sweetest sounds on the guitar, 
that you can make. They're used in R&B, blues, country, rock, pop, you name it. Uh, there are two notes that are separate. It's an interval, so there's two notes that you're playing on the guitar. They're separated by six notes from a scale. Major scale and mixolydian are two of the favorite ones. And we showed you how to do the mechanics on the first and third. And we showed you a little pattern. So hopefully you can incorporate that into your play. Give it a shot uh, when you're playing. Uh, give it a shot and incorporate it into your play. And if you get it wrong a little bit, no big deal. Just, just figure it out when you're when you're playing. Is is that the right pattern to move up or down? The one that I I think you could probably try first with is the brown eyed girl pattern. This one, and it sounds great. All right. Till next time, we'll see you on down the road.